Today's video is about the aim in Modern Warfare 3. So this should really be about Modern Warfare 2 because basically the engine changes they made for Modern Warfare 2 carried into Modern Warfare 3. And basically over the last few months, there's been tons of people, specifically mouse and keyboard players, saying that the aim just feels off. Something just feels completely off about the aim and they haven't been able to put their finger on it. And that's what the point of this video is gonna be. So most of the things I'm gonna talk about in this video are not specific to keyboard and mouse, but specifically, the main culprit that I think is causing AIM to feel kind of off in Modern Warfare 3 has a dramatically exaggerated effect for keyboard and mouse. So we're gonna go through this step by step. I'm gonna talk about the things that I think are causing this. I'm gonna show you guys the 16 games that I've compared. It's gonna be like Overwatch, Fortnite, CSGO, PUBG, just all the most popular games over the last like 10 years. We're gonna compare them, see if they have these things in them, and I'll try to explain why I think what I think about what's causing this. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about is just aim sway. This is not something new to COD, but later on in the video, you'll see how I think it is different and changed in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. But basically, I just want to explain how it works to start with. So basically, it's a it's a two sine wave curve in the X axis and the Y axis with slightly different frequencies. And it starts when you ADS. It's constantly happening in the background before you've even ADS. Then when you ADS, it moves your aim to that point wherever it was randomly in that, those two curves. So you can see this right here. I'll put the, the reticle right on the head of this target at 25 meters. And then when I ADS, it'll be in a random point off the target. So you can't really predict that. You don't know where it is because you can't see it when you're not ADS. So that's just one factor that makes it a little bit more random and feels weird when you, 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 know, you flick to a target, you're right on their head, and then you ADS and you're just not actually on their head because you can't see that aim sway. So obviously I built this gun to have terrible aim sway to kind of exaggerate the effect, but you can see that it's in a random point when I ADS. You don't know where it's going to be, and that just really makes it more difficult to you know snap onto people's heads. And that's something that keyboard and mouse, um, you know, every other game has basically direct input pretty much, so where you're aimed is where you think you're aimed, and it just feels a lot more crisp that way. Aim sway is not a new thing. This has been in pretty much all the COD games that had you know the ADS mechanic, and it's in almost all other games that have an ADS mechanic as well. I just think it could potentially work a little bit differently. So I've written some Python code to show what it does now. So basically, if I run this, it's gonna pop up with a curve that's gonna start animating. So you can see that it starts in a random point. It's just like it does in game, and then it'll draw, draw the curve. I'll run this a couple times so you can see how it's just in a random point at the start. So this one started up in the top left instead of in the bottom left. Um, but how I think this could be changed is just make it always start in the center. So when you ADS, have the the curves start essentially at t equals zero with no phase shift. So if we change this code to basically just a random sign for you know the, the x-axis and the y-axis, and then always have it starting in the center, you're gonna see it's gonna look a lot better. So I'll do that now. So running it now, you can see that it started in the center and just moved away from that when you ADS. So that's what I would like to see happen in game I highly doubt this will ever get changed because this is something that's been the same for a long time. But this is just one of those things that it just adds to the randomness. And for keyboard and mouse, like, you know, trying to have little flicks and just consistent aim, you can't really get that. So if I run this again, you're going to see that it's going to start in the center again and go up to the left. But basically the way I want it to happen is it'll have a random sign for you know, the X and Y component. So this one started down to the left, but it still started in the center. So it can move away from the center point in some random direction, but we want it to start in the center. So basically that's just setting uh, the T equal to zero after ADS animation is fully finished. All right, effect number two that we're gonna talk about. This is one that I actually thought was new to Modern Warfare 2 and then also Modern Warfare 3. But upon checking the 16 games, this was actually also in Modern Warfare 19 and Warzone, Warzone 1. So I don't think this is the culprit for why Warzone 2 and Warzone, or Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 feel so off, but I do think it impacts it and it is an, an effect that will uh, cause problems for keyboard and mouse players and controller players alike, but it's just these effects get exa exaggerated uh, on keyboard and mouse. So this is what I'm talking about. So when you ADS, if you move your mouse one direction, the reticle shifts away from the center of the screen towards that direction. So if I move back and forth quickly here, you should be able to see this. The reticle is kind of wobbling back and forth left to right off the center of the screen. And I'll show you guys some more stuff here in a second that really, uh, you know, shows this effect. All right, so basically I took a weapon with high zoom and measured this and this is the maximum deviation so the green dot was the center of the screen and then obviously the red dot is where the bullet actually goes when you fire and this is purely from mouse movement or you know controller right thumbstick movement so when you're aiming quickly so if you're doing a flick or just tracking someone quickly your reticle is going to shift away from the center of the screen 
and make make your bullets not go to dead center on your screen and that is a very very weird feeling for keyboard and mouse players because it's just something that the vast majority of other games don't have it's almost always been since the beginning of time for fps games the bullet goes to the center of the screen and this reticle shift away from the center will create almost like a mouse acceleration feeling because there's a slight deviation as you move the mouse at different speeds which is kind of exactly what mouse acceleration does but this almost feels weirder than mouse acceleration because it's mouse acceleration normally is just kind of smoothing your mouse input out a little bit which can feel odd but this is smoothing your mouse input out and also shifting away from the center of the screen which we've just never really had before in other games the reticle always the center point was always where the bullet went and Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, and it turns out even Modern Warfare 19 had this, and I just didn't realize it. So because it was in Modern Warfare 19, I don't think this is the true culprit, but what I think happens is all these effects get combined, and Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 just felt even weirder because of all the combined effects. But the next one we're going to talk about is the one that I think is the real culprit. Quick note before we move on to the next one, this deviation might not look like very much compared to like this target size, but this is only a 25 meter away target. And that is already about half the width of a head hitbox. So at 50 meters, it was basically the size of the head hitbox. And I'm going to show you guys some math later on that calculates basically what all these effects can do and how much off they can make your aim. And it's pretty crazy what the end result is. So we'll see that in a little, a little bit later. The other weird part about that aim shift is that it, it kind of works the opposite as you would expect. So they basically did this because they want it to feel more realistic. They want it to feel like the weapon has like mass and can kind of shift away from the center of the screen. And, you know, in real life, when you're, you're moving your aim, the weapon has weight and it's going to be hard to keep it like perfectly centered in your eye. So they kind of did that to try to make it feel more realistic, which Modern Warfare 2 was like all about realism, it seemed like. And in my opinion, it's okay if there are games that are based in realism, that's completely fine, but COD has never been that, and I think that's why a lot of people really weren't happy with those design decisions. Um, so that's why they did it, but what's weird is it doesn't work how you'd expect. So in real life, if you if you were aiming down, uh, aiming down sights and you moved to the left, most of the time, like the weapon weight is gonna make the weapon wanna stay in the same place. So as you try to move, it's gonna almost like fall behind where you want it to be. And in the game, it does the opposite. So when you aim to the left, it moves the reticle left of center. When you aim to the right, it moves the reticle right of center. So it's almost like the opposite of what I would expect. All right, last up, this is the third reason I think aim feels really odd. And I think this is the main culprit. This is the thing that was new in Modern Warfare 2. It was not in Modern Warfare 19. It was not in Warzone 1. And it's not in pretty much any other game. There were only, like th I think, two other games of the 16 that I tested that had this. I'll show all those clips later on so you guys can see that. Basically what it is, it, when, you, when you strafe in this game, when you strafe one direction, the reticle shifts in that direction, away from the center of the screen. Just like, just like the aiming causes it, strafing also causes it. And those two effects stack. So if you're strafing left and you aim left, you shift even further off the center of the screen to the left. And again, I'll show math later for what that can cause uh, as far as how much off it is at different ranges and how it can cause completely missed shots. So this one feels super weird to me. So if I'm doing my normal 80-80 spam when I'm trying to, you know, not get shot, trying to miss bullets from the other person, this makes my aim go all over the place. And it's it's enough that you'll easily miss a target at 50 meters because of this. So that combined with the aim, combined with the aim sway, all these things compound and just make, you know, aim that just feels really like floaty and and weird and for mouse and key, mouse and key is a super precise input. It has to, you have to be perfect on mouse and key to hit your shots. Whereas controller, you can be just kind of close to perfect and just kind of get on the target and let aim assist take the wheel. Whereas this mouse and key is a direct input. What you do is what happens. And because there's all these other effects that are going on in Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, that's no longer the case. And that feels really, really bad to mouse and key players. I want to quickly show that you can actually see this in the crosshair as well. There's a setting in the menus now. Uh, that you can change so i'll search crosshair crosshair dot it's right here um, basically you can turn it on off or static i think it defaults to on if you set it to static the actual crosshair will stay perfectly still in the center of the screen even though that doesn't show the true aim point on moves that crosshair around so i've got the center dot turned on as well so that center dot that you can see in the center of my crosshair that is the center of the screen and then as i move the gun around you can see that my crosshair my actual real aim point completely shifts around that. It doesn't stay anywhere near the center. Um, it gets pretty dramatically off in some cases. It's, and this is all because of the weapon having like a mass now. You can tell that they're trying to make it feel real. Um, basically, it follows where the barrel's pointing. So if you strafe left, 
um, the barrel shifts to the right and you can see that the aim point shifts to the right as I'm strafing to the left and vice versa. And then when I ADS and strafe, it does the opposite. So when I'm strafing left, the reticle shifts left because the barrel shifts left. When I strafe right, the barrel shifts right, the reticle shifts right. So it's just a thing they're trying to make the game feel more realistic. But I just, I don't think that COD is the game for that. And it's just makes mouse input feel very, very strange when basically no other games do this. There's some couple, a couple mil sims that do things very similar to this, but COD's not a mil sim. That's just not what it's meant to be. So let's combine all this and kind of talk about why this feels so much worse on keyboard and mouse than it does on controller. The first reason is just that keyboard and mouse is direct input. It's perfectly precise. You have to be perfect with it in every other game, and but it's predictable. So in every other game, you pretty much can snap onto a head and get that headshot because you know that the crosshair, the bullet, everything is going to be in the center of the screen. This game, that's not the case anymore. So that's the first reason. Um, controller also has the same problems, but because controller is just a less precise input, you don't really feel that effect as much. Second reason, and this is the big one, this is what really, like the mechanics are different between controller and keyboard and mouse for this. So you remember what I said, when you aim to the right, if you move your aim to the right, the reticle shifts to the right, off, off center to the right of the screen. If you strafe to the left, the reticle shifts left. So when you get rotational aim assist, what does that do? Well, if you get rotational aim assist, as you move left, the reticle shifts left because you're strafing left, but rotational aim assist pulls your aim back to the right a little bit. So basically you get the effect of the reticle shifting left for the strafe, and then rotational aim, aim assist automatically pulls your aim back to the right, which shifts the reticle to the right. So that kind of counteracts the effect of the strafe, which is why controller players just don't feel this as much as mouse and key players, because every time they strafe one direction, they get a counteracting effect from the way the aim is turning in the other direction. So that's just right there. Keyboard and mouse doesn't have that automatic, instantaneous, computer-assisted ro rotational aim assist. So we only feel the strafe mechanic because we have to manually correct for both moving to the left and the reticle shifting to the left, whereas controller players only have to correct for about half of that, that reticle shift because of the effect of rotational aim assist. So I've been working so hard on TGD, getting all the data, getting native apps out for iOS and Android, which are both released, by the way, if you didn't see that in the intro, we now have native Android and iOS apps, so you should definitely go download those. But I finally got to play the game for probably four or five hours the other night. I was just grinding rust, trying to get camos unlocked. And this was a situation that I kept running into. Somebody would be on the head glitch up at the top of rust, and I play keyboard and mouse, and I can just feel this effect happening where I would be tap strafing back and forth, and it just made aim impossible. And I could feel when the sway and the reticle shift would just line up and just make me completely miss. So this is a comp comparison of keyboard and mouse versus controller. So we're gonna start with keyboard and mouse, and then it'll shift to controller, and I'll mention that. So this is keyboard and mouse, me just strafing, not no input from the right, uh, the mouse at all, no input from the right stick when it switches to uh, controller. And you can see that it just kind of, it just makes it weird, like this just looks odd. Now we switched over to controller, and we have rotational aim assist on that guy, the ex exact same strafe spam, and the reticle just basically stays on the guy. There's still aim sway that you have to correct for in both cases, but because that rotational aim assist kind of counters the effect of the reticle shift, you just kind of stick on target and it doesn't feel a whole lot different than previous games did. But for keyboard and mouse, it feels completely different and it feels super wonky. Now I do want to mention before I go further, this, this strafe reticle shift away from the center of the screen, this is a new thing. We've always had aim walking steadiness. We had aim walking steadiness in Warzone 1 where as you walked, the gun would bounce a little bit, um, but that never shifted the reticle itself to the right or left away from the center of the screen. What that did was, was it was a consistent cadence of bouncing that you could predict and you could learn how to deal with. But this is just, just feels so strange because it, it counteracts exactly what you would expect. Basically, they've couple, coupled your, your character's movement to your aim point, which is what the main problem is here. And that was not really done before in this way. It wasn't really tied to the rate at which your character was moving, the rate at which you were aiming. Aim walking steadiness was just a consistent cadence bounce that was learnable and predictable, and this is not. And also there are attachments that reduce the, the aimed walking bounciness, essentially, and there's no attachment or anything that reduces this, this reticle shift. It just happens, and you can't do anything about it. All right, let's get into the 16 game comparison. We've got a lot of the most popular games of the last 10 years. As I'm going through this, I want to remind you guys to sub to the channel. I put a ton of effort into basically everything that I do for TGD. We've now released 
native iOS and Android apps. You guys can download those. Um, this video took a long time to test and edit, obviously get all these 16 games downloaded and tested. Uh, but yeah, just wanted to remind you, drop a sub, drop a like on the video, comment on the video, uh, and let's get into these 16 game comparisons. Essentially, the comparison is just me looking for two of those effects. I want to see if they have the reticle shifting away from the center of the screen when you move your aim point, and I want to see if they have the strafing effect where when you strafe, the reticle shifts away from the aim point. And we'll go through this, you'll see that not many games have those, and I think that's for good reason. It just makes aiming feel really weird. An FPS game is all about the gunplay, and this just makes gunplay not feel good, in my opinion. All right, so as you can see, as we went through that, the vast majority of games do not have the aim movement reticle shift or the strafe reticle shift. Some have both. The only ones that had both besides 
uh, besides Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 are was Battlefield 3. Battlefield 3 was the only game in all of these, all 16 of the games that I tested that had both of those effects, and the strafing effect was kind of minimized in Battlefield 3 because it was so slow. So, like, the problem with the, what's happening in Modern Warfare 2 is it happens so quickly that it's, like, very important in a gunfight to be able to correct for it and see that it's coming and understand how it's going to happen and how it works. And I think that's the, the core of the problem is that most of these people that are playing mouse and keyboard in COD have played shooters for their whole lives. So they've played all these different games and they've gotten good at them and they're just throwing all these wonky weird effects into uh, the COD engine nowadays that seem to just be kind of trying to make it more random, more more difficult to hit your shots. And those things just really impact keyboard and mouse players more than controller players because it is a direct input. What you do with the mouse is where your aim goes. So it needs to be predictable. And that's what's causing the problem with Warzone 2, Modern Warfare 2, uh, and Modern Warfare 3 is that it's just very, it's starting to get very unpredictable. And we've got this muscle memory from, you know, 15 years of using mouse and key on different games where we didn't have those effects. And it just makes it feel like your aim is off. And it's all it is is game mechanics. And I think that, um, I think that's the core of the problem. All right, I said we would come back to Aimsplay because I wanted to talk about something else. And this is that thing. So in Modern Warfare 19, when you would look at the Aimsplay and actually measure the Aimsplay, it looked exactly like this Python program. It looked perfectly predictable. It was smooth. Everything was the same. Um, it was still kind of, you know, an unpredictable curve. That was the nature of Aimsplay. But for some reason, in Modern Warfare 2, Aimsplay seems to be completely impacted by these two effects I've mentioned. So how you're aiming and how you're strafing, and just the gun movement in general is now like added to the aim sway almost. So just the way the gun is swaying as it, you know, as it has inertia while it's swaying, that is factored into the aim sway, and you can see this. So it looked it used to look just like this, and now it looks like this. So this is a gun sway. So you can see it's just kind of random and weird. If you look at the background sway, so there's two different components. There's the way the gun sways around, and then the, the background scene behind it sways also, so that's what the difference is here. You can see even the background sway just doesn't look like that at all. These are direct points I measured in the game um, using computer vision program that I wrote. And if you combine the gun sway and the background sway, you can see it looks nothing like that, that, uh, that curve that I showed in Python. So it's just way more like random and weird feeling now on top of just being aim sway itself, where it's not where you're expecting to be aiming in when you ADS. So just wanted to cover that. The weapon mass and inertia seems to also be affecting the aim sway of the weapons. Like I said earlier in the video, I actually did the math, so it didn't look like the reticle was off by that much, but you'll be amazed how much it actually is off by when we look at this. So at what range does just strafing make you miss your target because of this strafe reticle deviation? So if you strafe, or aim, strafe and aim movement. So if you move the mouse or you strafe to the left, both of those have the same magnitude of deviation. It's 0.126 degrees. Um, if you do them both at the same time, you can actually get, you can double that because they just add up. So 0.252. Um, but what we're going to talk about here is strafe spamming. So when you're strafe spamming, you're going left, right, left, right, left, right, trying to avoid their bullets. Um, you can go from, you know, 0.126 degrees to the left to 0.126 degrees to the right. So that ends in 0.252 degrees being off. Uh, out at distance. So you can see that this this chart here, or this this table here, um, this is the distance here. So the distance to the target, 17 meters, 10 meters. Uh, and then we have half the head hitbox size and half the chest hitbox size because you're aiming for the center of the chest and the center of the head. So if you're off by just half of the size of the hitbox, those, those shots are going to miss. Um, so looking at this, as soon as the degrees pass one of these two numbers, that is when we start to miss. So uh, the head hitbox size is in this column. So at 18 meters, we start to miss headshots um, if we are strafe spamming. So 18 meters, you start to miss purely from this effect. That's super close. Um, if we look at where you start to miss just strafing in one direction, so if you're just strafing to the left, your aim is off of enough at 35 meters to completely miss a headshot. So it looked like a very small amount, but when you're strafe spamming or just strafing in one direction out at longer ranges, it has a huge, huge impact. And it just makes it feel like there's like the mouse acceleration there that isn't supposed to be there is it's supposed to be direct input. Mouse is supposed to be direct input. If we look at the chest hit box, you can see you're hitting your shots, hitting your shots all the way down here until 57 meters, and you'll start to miss at 57 meters. That is 0.251 degrees. So that is the strafe spam miss point. And then all the way down at 115 meters, you start to miss chest shots, just strafing in one direction um, from, from this 
strafing reticle shift effect that is in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. So the previous one was just for strafing. So what if the worst case scenario happens and we're strafing left and aiming left? We combine those two and if we're you know, doing both of those back and forth, then we have these two numbers. The numbers just get doubled, so 0 0.252 and 0 0.504 degrees. Um, so you're, you can see that immediately, before ten, shorter than 10 meters, you are missing if you're doing the strafe and aim back and forth in the same direction. You will miss a headshot. That's how much it is off by. It's, it would be somewhere around like 8 meters you're going to miss a, a head uh, headshot from this, this same effect. And then at 18 meters, you start to, uh, even if you're just going in one direction, you're aiming, moving your aim to the left and strafing to the left, then at 18 meters, you fully miss a headshot um, all the way out to infinity, obviously. And then the chest hitbox, you start to miss if you're doing this, the strafe spam and aim back and forth um, at 29 meters. So that's super short to miss a target completely in the chest. And then you start to uh, completely miss if you're just going in one direction at 57 meters. So this is, it seems like a small effect in the videos, but it's actually really dramatic when you have a, an input that has to be perfect. So what's the solution? What do I think needs to change? Well, I think it would be awesome if aim sway, when you ads in, if your aim sway started from the zero zero position rather than being random. I talked about this earlier, but it starts in a random position, jumps to that position, and then starts following the curve, which makes it impossible to predict. It's just a randomness feature that I don't I don't like. It would be possible if the phase shift was removed to just start it at zero zero. So that'd be the first thing I like to see changed. I don't think that will ever change because that was how it was in Modern Warfare 19 as well. So I don't think that um, they will change that. I think that the aim movement where you move your mouse and the aim point shifts away from the center of the screen, I think that it'd be great if that was reduced or removed, but that was in Modern Warfare 19. So I know that that's not exactly what's causing this, um, but I do think it's the stacking effect of all these different things adding up. So I do think that's part of it. Um, I think that it's just that in Modern Warfare 19, we didn't have the strafe effect, and the strafe effect is the big one. So I would love to see WASD and the left thumbstick just completely decoupled from your aim position entirely. I don't think that what you're doing with your movement keys, what you're doing with your left thumbstick, should make your aim move. I think that because mouse is a direct input, we need, we need that direct input to just be exactly that. Almost every game in history, the most popular FPS games of all time have just left the reticle in the center of the screen throughout all movement and you know where it is it's predictable your shots will go right there um, so that would be my that's what I want I would love to see them just decouple the strafe any sort of movement from your aim point all right guys that's it for the video I hope you enjoyed it took a lot of time to make this video a lot of effort so I would appreciate you sub to the channel, like on the video, comment on the video. We also have those native iOS and Android apps, so get those downloaded. Write us a review. We really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.